but all of us have to be evangelists. We, we have to be willing to respond to each situation with a testimony of how it is that our God has changed our lives. Mary teaches us, if we just say yes, the Lord is able to do amazing things. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz for the Catholic Watchman and the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis. Um, you've heard of the, the, like the trifold commission or the anointing that happened at your baptism, right? You were anointed a priest you, uh, to offer sacrifice to the Lord. You're offered, uh, anointed a prophet to be able to speak God's word to a people that longs to hear from him. You're also anointed a king. And that's what I want to talk about today, just that what is it to be anointed a king? And specifically as men, how do, we, how do we actually live up to the anointing that was given to us? I mean, because that's, that's, it's a responsibility. I mean, we have to, we have to recognize that right, right off the bat, is that it's a responsibility to have been anointed. It's a responsibility to be a man of God. And you think of that all the way back to um, the Old Testament. Here is the people of Israel longing for a king. They get King Saul. He's fine, and then he, then he fails his responsibility. And so what happens is the prophet Samuel goes out and he finds David. And he anoints David there. And when he anoints David, he anoints them. He anoints him. Essentially, ultimately what's going to happen is, is David will become a priest and a king. A prophet, possibly. I mean, he writes the Psalms. That's pretty good. It's kind of prop- prophetic. But he has that threefold mission. He has that threefold commission. He has that threefold responsibility from a young age. And at first in his life, he embraces that responsibility. At first, David, he lives up to the challenge. Um, he serves uh, King Saul really well. He goes into battle to fight for the people of Israel, to fight for the name of his God. He then unites the kingdom together. The 12 tribes that were disparate tribes, they become one united kingdom under this man who had been anointed to be king. See, here's what David didn't do. David didn't do what a lot of us are tempted to do. As, just basically as men, one of the things we're tempted to do is we're tempted to, um, we're tempted to passivity. I mean, that's ultimately what it is. It's like we kind of think that if someone else is going to do it, great, awesome, great. Unless you're a control person, which is, you know, has its other challenges to it. But if you are the kind of man who is kind of like the average guy, one of your temptations is passivity. That you say you're a married man and your wife is like, well, listen, um, I'll take care of it. She's like, okay, you can say, well, you're going to take care of it? Perfect. That means I don't have to deal with it. Um, what, what, why are your kids making, making the mess here? That kind of a situation. Um, what should we do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Now, it's not to say that you have to be in control of everything, but one of the temptations we have, one of the wounds we have is towards passivity. But like King David, like any king, the surest way to essentially forsake your commission, to forsake your consecration, is to give in to the temptation towards passivity. The idea that someone else will take care of it. And maybe even someone else who wants to take care of it. In fact, this is one of the great uh, trials, great struggles in a lot of marriages, is that the temptation for men is towards passivity. The temptation toward women is towards control. And at first, that works out great, didn't it? I mean, if, imagine in your marriage, maybe it worked out phenomenally well because she got what she wanted, she's in charge. You got what you wanted, you don't have to do anything. And then what happens is it poisons the well. It poisons the relationship where pretty soon she starts resenting, why don't you get off the couch and do something? And you start feeling like, emasculated. You start feeling like, what, I'm not, am I not like the, the man in this house? Is this not my own home? We get to that place because we will have relinquished what God had given to us. Not control, because it's not, it's not the temptation to reject passivity and embrace control. It's the invitation and the commission, the consecration to reject passivity and embrace responsibility. And that's the key. When it comes to your kingship, and even when it comes to your priesthood and, and your being a prophet, all of us have been given a great responsibility. So in this case, in your life, whether you're married or not, whether you're young or old, doesn't matter. We will have the same temptation is to embrace passivity or just go with the flow. We have a commission. And that commission, as I've heard many intelligent, wise men, Christian men say, our, our commission is to reject passivity and embrace responsibility and we do that as kings by embracing the commission that Christ has given to us at our baptism. 
because he has given you a degree of influence, right? So uh, to be a leader, like a king, is to have been given influence. It's to have been given responsibility, but it's also to have been given the influence or the power to be able to live up to that responsibility. And so every one of us has a degree of influence. You know, your influence doesn't have to be massive. It doesn't have to even extend beyond your home. It doesn't have to extend beyond one coworker. But the first thing we need to do is embrace responsibility and recognize that as a commissioned, as a consecrated man of God, as a consecrated uh, man in the kingdom, you've been given an influence. You've been given a degree of leadership. So the question I have to ask myself at twofold is this, is am I leading myself first? And after that, who am I leading? The first question every leader has to ask, the first question every king has to ask, first person every man who's been given responsibility has to ask is, am I leading myself? Or am I just kind of drifting? Because that's, that's the, the consequence. If I don't lead myself, I will just drift. And I have to say, it's probably the rarest of occasions where a man drifts, or any human being, drifts into a place of awesome. <laughs> it's really rare that a, a man drifts to a place of greatness. You can only get to a place of greatness interiorly as a man of God if you lead yourself. Meaning, if you take responsibility for your own life and say, Lord, where do you want me to go? I will not stop until I get there. Even in the midst of my weakness, even in the midst of my failures, I will not stop until I get there. Because why? I'm not drifting. I'm leading. I'm being led by the Lord. Okay, but what I'm saying here is I have to lead myself first. Secondly, after that, who am I leading? Because the reality is every one of us is leading or influencing somebody. Here's the question I love to ask. Um, of my brother priests, I love to ask this of, of husbands and fathers, or anyone who is influencing someone else, anyone who, who you take responsibility for, that you've been anointed a king, so who is someone you're responsible for? Okay, if that person whom you love, that you were responsible for, if they lived the way you live 24-7, would they become a great saint? Just like, that's it, that's the question. If, if the people you love, the people in your life, maybe your, your, your sons, if your children live the way you live, would they become great saints? Priests, if your parishioners live the way you live, would they become great saints? Or would they become kind of like, oh, decent people who are kind of sort of interested in being like watchmen, you know, kind of a, but like not be great saints, just like decent people who pay their taxes on time and die at the right moment, you know? But other than that, if your kids prayed how you pray, would they become great saints? If they serve how you serve, would they become great saints? If they fight for their families the way you fight your, for your family, would they become great saints? If they lived when no one is watching the way you live when no one is watching, would they become great saints? Because this, this commission, this consecration to be a king in the kingdom of God is to have been given the commission to reject passivity, to embrace responsibility, to recognize your influence to lead yourself first, but then also realize that this, I love this phrase, that you are the prototype. And this is the last thing. You are the prototype. We, as, as the, well, sorry, clarification. Jesus is the prototype, right? He is the king. He is the priest. He is the prophet. He is our Lord. He's the prototype. After that, for the people around us, St. Paul has said, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Are you being an imitator of Christ so that if someone else imitated you in imitating him, they would look more like him. They'd become that great saint. They'd become an image of Christ. If not, reject passivity. Embrace that responsibility. Recognize your influence. Lead yourself first. Follow after Christ and recognize and embrace the fact that how you live your life will form and fashion a legacy that will live far beyond you. If your kids if your parishioners, if your grandkids, if your friends live the way you live, would they become great saints? Would they become great kings? Would they become like Christ? If not, then it's time to take some steps forward to lead yourself, embrace responsibility, and be the king you are consecrated to be. 